let's talk about a really interesting mechanism of evolution that is not natural selection. I've said before that there are a number of evolutionary mechanisms that don't involve natural selection, uh, and genetic drift is one of them. Uh, genetic drift is uh, leads to changes in the gene pool entirely by chance. And it happens for a couple of reasons. First of all, because of independent assortment of chromosomes, which you remember happens in uh, meiosis when homologous pairs of chromosomes uh, distribute to the different cells. And that which, which chromosome goes to which cell is a chance. Uh, also, um, sexual reproduction itself, it's largely by chance which sperm fertilizes which egg. So which genes get passed on um, is a big part of, is a, is a result of a lot of chance. So when we're talking about genetic drift, we're not talking about there being any selective pressures on a trait. We're just talking about which uh, chromosome happened to get into the lucky egg that got fertilized. Genetic drift has a much bigger uh, effect on small populations than in large populations because the small populations have a smaller gene pool. When we talk about the gene pool, what we mean is all of the alleles in a given population. So here's an example of a population of flowers. Uh, in the gene pool, we have two alleles for color. Um, capital R, our dominant allele is red, lowercase r, our recessive allele is white. In this first generation of flowers, uh, we can actually count how many of each allele are in the population by counting the individuals with each genotype. All of our homozygous dominant individuals have two of each copy of the allele. We have one, two, three, four, five homozygous dominant individuals. They each have two of the big R alleles, so we have 10 R big R's from them. We have one, two, three, four heterozygous individuals. They each have one copy of the big R allele, so we get four uh, copies of the big R from them. So in total, if we add all of these up, we get 10 plus four, we get 14 uh, big R alleles, which is 70% of the gene pool. And uh, when we look at the heterozygotes, we get a little r from each of them. So one, two, three, four, four r's from them. And then one homozygous recessive individual, we get two little r's from them. Four plus two, total of six little r's in the gene pool. So the gene pool, 70% uh, dominant alleles, 30% recessive alleles. Okay, so, and these numbers, these percentages are our gene, or excuse me, our allele frequencies. Literally how frequent each allele is in the population. After one generation, not because of any kind of selection on color, just because of which individuals randomly got fertilized, which traits got passed on, we see a shift in our gene pool. We now only have, because these circled individuals reproduced, we have one, two, three homozygous dominant individuals, and we still have four heterozygotes, so we now only have 10 big R alleles, but we now have three white flowers, three homozygous recessive individuals, Add that to our four heterozygotes, we have four plus six or 10 little r's in the gene pool. And now our gene pool is 50-50, big R, little r. So we've gone from 70-30 to 50-50, okay, in one generation, not because of selective pressure, just because of chance. Now in the third generation, only these two flowers reproduce. And so our third generation is entirely big R. Uh, and now we have 100% of the gene pool is that big R allele. Now, because there are no little R's in this population, this population is not going to have any white flowers ever again. This would become what we call a true breeding population, which is remember what Mendel used for his experiments on pea plants. He used true breeding pea plants. 
So this is how that can come about with the loss of an allele from a population. In order for the white allele to come back, it would have to be either an allele coming in from some other population or a new mutation in this population. But from this population, we have completely lost the white allele, and so no more white flowers are going to grow in this population. That's genetic drift having a really big impact on a population with this huge change in allele frequencies just because of genetic drift, just because of chance. One other thing that can happen to populations is what we call a bottleneck effect. This is when a population experiences a very large decline in numbers. And you can imagine that this is going to have a very big effect on the gene pool. So we're representing this by these little beads in this bottle. And we have, when we start, we have green and orange and purple beads. And then if we try to pour these out of the bottle, they have to go through the bottleneck, which is narrow. And so not all the beads can go through if we only pour for a moment. Our bottleneck event leaves only a few survivors. And in this case, our surviving population just has purple and green beads in it. We've completely lost this orange trait. Again, this can have a really big effect on small populations, and especially it can be a very important um, uh, mechanism because it leaves a small population behind. Uh, cheetahs, for example, went through a bottleneck about 10,000 years ago. Uh, and because of that, the cheetah population has a very low genetic diversity. So genetic drift can have a big effect on uh, the cheetah population. But that bottleneck also leaves them susceptible to natural selection because they've lost diversity in the gene pool. So new diseases, changes in the environment, can have a bigger effect on the population because there aren't as many alleles in the population. There just isn't as much diversity of traits. All cheetahs are really, really similar to each other. There isn't as much genetic variation. So this population is now more subject to genetic drift and more subject to natural selection. Now gene flow is another mechanism that can have a big impact, especially on small populations. Gene flow is the movement of genes from one population to another. This usually happens because individuals move, but it doesn't have to be. Um, it, if you think about pollen blowing in the wind, um, that pollen is um, plant sperm. It's a little packet of plant sperm. That pollen can go a long way without the, the whole plant going to another population. And um, individuals don't have to go to a new population and stay there. They could go reproduce and then go back to their original population. So uh, in this case, we have one population of beetles that is entirely uh, the recessive allele, ma making them green. We have another that is entirely the dominant allele, and they're brown. So if one of these brown beetles goes to the green population and reproduces, then they're going to create a new a population that is now heterozygous or mixed gene pool in this green population. That could be a big effect on the beetle populations. But what if beetle this beetle, this brown beetle, what if it travels over here but doesn't reproduce? That's actually not going to be gene flow. You have to leave your genes there for gene flow to have happened. So if it just visits and goes back home, doesn't reproduce, then it's not going to change the gene pool over here. Okay, Gene flow always affects the alleles in a gene pool. One population that it, uh, on which gene flow, uh, the lack of gene flow is having a big effect are mountain lions, especially in the LA area. The population of mountain lions in Southern California is very, very fragmented. And um, we have a population in the Santa Monica Mountains, we have a population in Griffith Park, and we have a population in the Angeles National Forest. But the problem is that there is a lack of gene flow between these populations because in order to get from one place to another, the cats have to cross a freeway. That leads to inbreeding, low genetic 
diversity and in some cases a lack of some a loss of some alleles in populations so that means that our mountain lion populations the pockets that are left are subject to genetic drift and subject to natural selection because if there is a disease for example that affects the mountain lions in the hollywood hills then um, that mountain lion population could be wiped out by some very small change in the environment so gene flow genetic drift bottleneck these are all things that can work together with um, natural selection but they're not part of natural selection so genetic drift just chance gene flow the movement of alleles usually with individuals uh, and then uh, bottlenecks where we have a really fast breakdown in the number of individuals in a population.